Hi there, Steve Coffin here again to talk about language learning, which is a subject that I find fascinating. That's become a big part of my life the last uh, 15 years or so. And today I want to talk about uh, a few subjects that are related in my mind. It has to do with intermediate content, which is a, a major problem for language learners. Uh, there's a lot of beginner content. Uh, and it's easy to access authentic content, newspapers, uh, you know, Netflix videos, but it's difficult to get from the beginner content where obviously there's a lot of high frequency ver or words from there to being able to actually enjoy the authentic content. So how do we fill the gap? What I'm finding in my Persian is that, um, I've asked, uh, this Iranian or several Iranians to create stories or to create episodes where they talk about themselves, who they are, what they like to do, uh, their professional life, uh, what they studied, uh, their interests in different, uh, sports or cooking or whatever it might be to speak naturally and then to transcribe. I've mentioned this before, and I think we're going to get some dialogues as well, where people just talk to each other and then transcribe. So this is natural content, but one of the advantages of the mini stories, which is where I, you know, start into any language is the amount of repetition because we have the sort of point of view, different tense or different person covering essentially the same story and then followed by questions. And the questions of course are simply more exposure because they begin with a statement of something from the story. And then they ask you to say, where, why, or yes or no, uh, without forcing you to try and think about what happened in the story, which is something that I find quite annoying because I sometimes can't remember. All I really want is that, you know, three, uh, times a triple repetition of essentially the same vocabulary with some change, you know, going from a statement to a question or positive to negative and so forth. So that works really well. So I've asked, Sahra, who is my Iranian collaborator, uh, to create questions for these, you know, rambles of hers where she talks about herself and what she likes to do. And it really improves them because it makes it easier to focus on the vocabulary in the original, uh, monologue. And it's easier to understand the original monologue. So it drives you back into the story. I've mentioned this before. I would like to get people to help me figure out how we can create this kind of content. We have a series in link, uh, called the Iranians. Can we have one for, I don't know, the, uh, the Parisians, uh, the Quebecois, the Brazilians, uh, the, the Pekingese, I don't know, the Russians, anything where a group of people can get together, record, uh, a five minute little monologue or a dialogue, then create 10 questions in this format, statement, question about the statement, and then answer repeating the same vocabulary. We will be, I will be happy to compensate people. I would love to start getting this kind of content into link and, or we make it available to people. We would use it in link, but other people can use it however they want. So I would be very interested in doing that now. People have pointed out that this is a technique called circling, or it relates to a technique called circling. The point of view stories, the circling, all of these things come from a variety of teaching techniques in the sort of TPRS teaching proficiency through reading and storytelling. Uh, and there are variants on this theme. It's the sort of comprehensible input approach to language learning. Now I uh, have, I'm going to leave two links, uh, in the description box to articles that describe this circling questions technique. And just the two that I looked at in preparation for this video and which I, you know, I'm leaving the links here in the description box. Uh, this very much describes a teaching technique. Now, my perspective as a learner, as an independent learner. And when I look at other independent learners who are mostly 18 years and older, you know, our situation and our needs as learners 
Our needs are different from the position of a teacher who has to amuse the classroom. I mean, I remember as a kid in class, we were just as much interested in interacting with our friends in the classroom as in listening to the teacher. So the teacher has to grab our attention somehow. And in one of the links, you'll see there's a video of an example of a uh, circling, you know, question type class for Spanish. But, but typically the, the emphasis there, the teacher has to teach something. So the teacher uses these circling questions to help, you know, give the learners more exposure, more repetition for certain specific structures that they're trying to get across. It's almost like a form of drilling. It's trying to drill home certain structures. So that keeps the kids occupied and undoubtedly teaches them something. But that's not what I'm looking for. Uh, my experience as a learner is that if I'm being drilled in a certain structure or even if circling questions are being used to provide that repetition, that necessary repetition in a structure, my brain starts to, you know, tune out. Uh, and that very often these structures that I want to learn, I'm going to learn them over a long period of time by coming across those structures in different scenarios, in different bits of content, so that my goal is to simply consume a lot of content, confident that eventually the structures are going to, are going to, you know, fall into place. I might occasionally look up explanations or see examples, you know, concentrated examples of these structures, but mostly I'm relying on my listening and reading to, you know, uh, make it possible for my brain to start to tie some of these ends together and, and recognize these, these patterns. So what I'm looking for is not so much the sort of something that would, uh, captivate a classroom of little kids, but rather stories, monologues that are in of themselves interesting. So we're meeting Juan and then Jose and then Maria, and we're meeting different people from, I don't know, Venezuela or, you know, Peru, um, who talk about who they are and what they do, which is interesting because if we're interested in the language, we're interested in the people. And so these are natural monologues or dialogues, but then to make sure we can better understand these stories, we follow up with these say 10 or 12 questions. Uh, and so that it's, it's not so much listening to a teacher in a classroom, uh, to try and nail down some structure. It, it's rather natural, uh, you know, input comprehensible, uh, interesting input made more comprehensible because we have these follow up questions, which actually don't require us to think of anything It's just more exposure to the language. So have a look at the, um, uh, have a look at the, uh, the, the links there just to understand this, this technique, which is used with great success, I think in classrooms. But what I would really like to know is if anyone can send me an email, steve at link.com. If you can get together with some people, whether it be at your university place of work, a bunch of friends, and we will compensate you might be money, might be um, membership and link. I don't know, uh, but they have to be good. Like they have to be good. It can't be. Uh, you know, you've got a list of 10 things, my sports, my food, my this, and it sort of becomes a humdrum, um, you know, going through the motions. The idea is to get interesting, almost like mini biographies of people in the language group, you know, whose language we're learning. And then to help us understand these better, we add these questions at the end. And if we can get lots of these, I think that's a, a very good sort of intermediate type of content. It becomes intermediate because when people speak naturally, they tend to use less difficult words. It could be compelling because we learn about different people. We get to meet different people and it can become more comprehensible if we have these questions at the end. And I think that'll kind of move us towards better, uh, you know, to, to becoming better at, at using authentic uh, content. Although I would also like to try, uh, you know, if people are willing to help us, uh, you know, provide these kinds of questions for, you know, genuine, authentic, uh, you know, material like transcribed podcasts and stuff of that nature. But anyway, this is what I'm interested in seeing how far we can explore this idea. I look forward to hearing from you. 
steve at think.com. Bye for now.